the smartphone business, what's happening with Apple over the last 12 months, their core piece, their core piece of hardware seems to have gone ex-growth. Have we reached that point of saturation for smartphone sales, do you think? Well, that's a good question. Maybe, maybe I'll take a, a step back. Um, you know, the phone market is a big market, but, you know, it's, it's a fully penetrated market. And I think we go into cycles. I think we did see in uh, 2023, particularly correction. I think we have, to the pandemic, we have a lot of demand. Um, but, you know, we, we had some last earnings call. I think the market is returning to stability. We're cautiously optimistic. So I think we, we we have the normal rate of the market, which is a replacement rate, uh, rate market. But this Gen AI transition could create a new upgrade cycle, and then all of a sudden we have a lot of growth again, and we'll see. Let's put some sort of uh, some tangibles around this. When do you see the smartphone market returning to growth? How long will it be before we get there? It's very hard to make a prediction, especially because um, you know you you look at the market today, and uh, you know we the market used to be much bigger. Even when you think about prior to the pandemic, uh, we're not calling the market number just yet uh, in 2024, but it, we know it's smaller than it was to be. I think people looking at the current macroeconomic environment, they, they kind of decide when they're going to buy a new phone. However, however, the growth vector, it's, it's really related to new functionality that it's going to compel you to buy a new phone. And uh, we just like Today or tomorrow, I think Samsung is launching an impact, a new device, going to talking about uh, Galaxy S24, some of the things you can do with Gen AI on the phone. And as as we get to the transition, I hope everybody wants to buy a new phone. We're going to have growth again. <laughs> and we'll be able to just go like this, and the person that we want to see is right going to be over there. I'm curious from your point of view, uh, how concerned you are about say Apple creating its own chips, creating its own hardware. And we've seen this and they basically had some issues with it. They prolonged their replacement chips. But how much does that worry you? Well, look, uh, Apple has always had their own uh, processor on the iPhones. I think our relationship with Apple is on the modem. We provide to them the chips to make their cell phone connect with the cellular waves and make sure you're connected. That's our job. Uh, they have been uh, focused on trying to develop uh, their own chip, but recently we just uh, renew our agreement with them. I think we have a new agreement with them. It covers Auto 26. And uh, we'll see. I think right now we just focus on being a good supplier for the next three years. and. I'm going to give you my same answer. As long as cellular remains important, I think there's going to be a role for Qualcomm. You've been pretty safe when it comes to some of the tit for tat between Beijing and Washington, but how are you looking at navigating that going forward, given what we've seen other companies deal with? Look, we've been uh, fortunate that some of the things what we do today, we're not in the data center, we have not been impacted by any of the restrictions. And in, in one way, as the uh, peak of tensions, I think, between the two countries, I will say that our business actually with China actually increase uh, as we diversify, you know, uh, our company not only into phones, but into PCs and cars and industrial, uh, we expanded our relationships with China. Here's my simple answer, I think, to that question. Any company that has a leading technology product uh, and is a product that becomes very important for the digital transformation of many industries, such as automotive and others, you're going to have a big business in China. It's just a function of GDP. Um, I think we have been uh, so far in a stable place. We have to monitor the situation like every other company. And, you know, I will continue to believe, and that's what I had said, at the end of the day, strong commercial uh, relationships between America enterprises and our Chinese counterparts will be one of the things that could bring stability to the relationship. Does that monitoring get more challenging if we were to see a former President Trump win back the White House next year? Look, we're just focused on our technology and uh, we want to have markets that we can sell our technology. I think at the end of the day, one important thing to understand is certain certain technologies are globally interconnected. So you're going to have customers in different locations. You have customers in Europe and Japan. They will have a business in China as well, and you want to be a global supplier to them. I can see the Qualcomm team just around the corner. Very happy with that response that you didn't take the bait and talk about the former president. Christian, I want to talk about the direction of travel in the global economy. For a chip maker, just for the industry, do you think we're close to the point where they have to pick a country, have to choose a side? We're either going to supply China or we're supplying Europe and America. How close are we to that moment? 
Look, I, I don't think we are right now at this point in the industries that we serve. Uh, and it's, it's, it's one of those things that, uh, yeah, if it changes, I think companies have to adapt. We have seen that some industries had to face that. You, you have some industries that that's kind of the reality for different reasons, whether it's a cloud company or a social media company and et cetera. Uh, we have been not at this pace, so uh, it's something that we're gonna have to worry about it in the future. What industry do you think is gonna be the biggest area of growth for you? Um, we, we are very pleased what's happening with automotive. We're now working with virtually every car company. Com the car is becoming a new computing space and we our jobs to provide the digital part and I think sometimes they go alongside electrification. That's an exciting, it's going to build revenue for Qualcomm over time. The other one that was really happy about it and that's new to us, we're entering the PC space. Uh, we just built now in the fastest processor for any laptop and we think that could be a great opportunity for us. Okay, I have to ask this as we step back and re sort of reflect on this AI infused Davos, are we even going to have laptops or are they basically going to be headsets that we put on and we go like this and our words kind of show up? I mean, how far are we going away from the, the previous models of uh, normal existence? Look, it's, it's interesting. It's a great question. Uh, it, I remember when, uh, when laptops appear, people f thought that the desktop will go away. And then when phones appear, people said the computer is going to go away. Yep. And when glasses appear, you think the phone is going to go away. I think the reality <laughs> is uh, your phone's going to be still uh, with you. Your laptop's going to be still with you, but they're going to become much better. And they're going to become more useful. And uh, you're going to get more out of them. And I think that's going to be the great opportunity of Gen AI in those devices.